Well hello everyone and welcome back to the Logo Builder and the eagerly anticipated part 2 of the DGH LNER Pacific kit build. We're straight at the workbench, no messing around. It's been a while so let's get straight back into it. Uh, I've taken this chassis on now uh, a little bit further. Uh, I've just fitted the rods which will hold the brakes, uh, the brake hangers I should say, that's 0.7mm rod and just part of the um, mechanism for the valve gear uh, just at the front there that's all soldered on and ready to go. Uh, I've also built up the bogey and the pony just simple white metal soldering there nothing too fancy with that we'll do some white metal soldering later on and I've fitted some spare wheels that I've got uh, just to test for clearance and stuff like that so they work really nicely and I've fitted a couple of captive nuts inside the chassis there I hope you can see those just in there uh, and they're just to hold those in place and there's a little collar here which just goes on the back of the uh, pony truck and that just gets that to the right spacing away from the chassis. So that's all done and completed. Just a couple of bits that we need to do before we go any further with this chassis. And the thing that we need to check is how we're actually going to fit the foot plate onto the chassis itself. And I like to do that at this stage. Now DJH would have you screw, actually I can show you on the instructions. This is their solution here. So if you can just see there, there's that big threaded screw there. And they'll just have you screw that into the underside of the, what's that called? The foot plate. And that is their idea of securing that on. And then they screw it in from the chimney down into a captive nut in that frame space there. To me that just seems a bit counterintuitive and I prefer to actually secure the chassis to the foot plate from below if you like and the way that I've done that is simply to drill through and I've already fitted there at the back uh, a screw or a nut I should say into the chassis into the foot plate rather to hold that in place and then we'll just uh, have a look at soldering this front one on and then we can get the chassis into paint and we can take it on a stage further. So essentially the key to soldering, as always, really, is to get the metal, the parent metal, nice and clean. And I've already cleaned this up and smoothed it off in preparation for fitting this uh, captive nut. We're just going to get the soldering iron on and we're going to leave it about a temperature of 370 is fine to begin with. And what we're going to do is just tin the top of this nut like so with some 145 solder. So just while the soldering iron's heating up, I'll just get a bit of flux onto there like that. And as you can see, I've just threaded, this is an 8BA nut, and I've just threaded it onto a cocktail stick, and that just stops most of the thread inside from getting gummed up with solder when we actually add our 145 to it. So, that's coming up to temperature now, slowly but surely. I'm going to try and be patient, but I'm not very patient, so let's just crack on. So we're just going to get a little bit of solder on the end of the iron. There it is, melting nicely now pretty much up to temperature and we've already put some flux on the end of the nut and you can hear the the flux fizzing away and there we are that solder's just made a nice neat ring nice silver ring around the nut that is tinned now so let's clean the tip of the iron and then turn it down to about 240 because we're now going to solder onto the white metal itself and that's the beauty of having a temperature controlled iron is that you can have better control over soldering when you're when you're doing white metal. A lot of people are scared of doing it because they're scared of melting the casting and it's a really nice casting. We don't want to ruin it. So turning the temperature of the iron down just helps us not to melt everything and turn it into a huge great mess. So I just let this iron cool down a little bit. And again, we're going in with the flux like so, plenty of flux on there like that. And then hold with the cocktail stick, just, in, just ensures that everything is nice and central. And where is my low melt solder? There it is, excuse me. We just grab some of that. The iron's now cooled down sufficiently to enable me to do this soldering. And now just introducing the solder like so and it should be flashing around there really nicely. 
There we are. Let that go off and you can see when it goes off because it changes color. I hope that you saw that. And we've now got a nice ring of solder around there. Now, that nut is now secure. And what we're gonna do is with an APA tap, just in the uh, tap wrench there, we're just gonna go in on the underside and just clean that nut out just so that it's nice, thread is nice and clean. Just go in there like so, there we are. And you'll know if you've soldered it on properly because you're able to run the tap through like that. I'll just brush off the swarf that's come through on the other side and then we can take that off like so. And that's a captive nut just fixed in place, ready to accept the chassis. And I'll just show you how that attaches in. So chassis goes on like that. There's a screw through into there. That does that like so. And it'll be the same at the back. And now that's held on nicely. And if I show you here, this is the smoke box boiler casting. And I've just drilled a nice big hole in the bottom there. Hopefully, if I'm lucky, I haven't tested this by the way. This should fit over, there we are. Lovely. So that all fits on there nicely like so. The chassis connects up the screw. You can probably just see in there like that. It's nicely hidden. The screw at the back there is nicely hidden by the casting here. And everything screws in from the underneath. So I can screw the chassis on to the frame very, very easily. And the same with the bogey and the pony. So everything goes on from the underneath. Now we've got all that done, we well, can get this in paint. I'll get the chassis primed up, uh, spray it black, and you'll join me again on the workbench shortly, and we'll take it on another few stages. So then, overnight, uh, I've got the frames painted up. Just my usual way of doing things, which is a coat of Halford's Etch Primer, and then a top coat sprayed on of Tamiya Flat Black. 95% of that. A little bit of brown in there, just a few drops just to knock back the black a little bit. And then one drop of gun metal in there as well, just to give a bit of a metallic sort of shine to it. That's my standard sort of frame color, if you like, for doing that. I just masked off the relevant parts, the bearings and the bits that I'm gonna solder onto later on to make it nice and easy. Uh, also painted up the bogey and the pony in the same color and that's all done. And now effectively we were ready to fit the wheels. Now the wheels, I'm really proud of myself because I painted and lined these myself. Uh, if you can just see there, hopefully that focuses on there. So I put the lining on there myself just with the bow pen and compasses and fitted everything up ready to go. When I'm attaching the nuts onto the, um, onto the axles and the, the crank pins as well, I just put a tiny little drop of this stuff. This is Let's see if that picks up, hopefully that's focused now. This is like a liquid thread lock. Just a little drop of that. It means that you can take the nuts off if you want to, uh, but it secures them on there. And what that hopefully prevents is a heartache when you're running your loco at 80 miles an hour and all of the motion falls off because the crank pins work loose and everything gets bent and mangled. So hopefully by using this thread lock stuff, we just prevent that from happening. So that's all good, that's on. Uh, one other note that I just need to mention is I just use these tiny little spacers here. They're called shims. They're from 24-7 Developments. And they just space out the wheel space and the back-to-backs just to a fine scale standard. I think it pushes them out to something like 14.8 rather than 14.5 mil. So it's not a lot, but it just improves the running over fine scale track. And it still runs very nicely through normal track. So, the way that we fit the wheels in is you put one of the shims on the inside there and then we just want one of these Pico 1 8 inch fibre washers. Insert the wheel into the bearings like so and it should still be a really nice smooth action. And then we need to do the quartering. And basically what quartering means is if this crank pin is up, then the crank pin 
on the right hand side of the logo will be 90 degrees forward of that and that's called right hand lead. I think most of the LNER engines were right hand lead. Most locomotives were probably right hand lead. You can check your prototype notes, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter in my opinion, because if you can see this side, you can't see that side. So you don't know what it is anyway. So just put that in there like so. We'll do the front wheel first. Next, I need to put on one of the fiber washers like so. Then we go in with one of these little spacing shims. That sits on there. And then just make sure that that crank pin on the other side is up. Rotate the wheel 90 degrees forward of that. And you'll feel it just click into place like so. Then just a tiny little drop of liquid thread lock just on the end there like so. We can always wipe that off later. Then we get our little Romford cramping nut. The quartering is really easy on these because the insides of the back of the wheel are all square so you're always going to be at the right angle. Just screw that in like so. Nice and tight and there we are. That wheel is nicely on there. Need to do the same thing for the other two wheels, of course, remembering to fit our gearbox. That's a little bit fiddly because you kind of need two, three pairs of hands to do that. Just remembering to fit the drive and tighten that up on the center axle. So I'll get these bits done and then we'll carry on with the chassis. So the observer amongst you will notice that we've now fitted all of the wheels to the chassis. And if we just confirm that the Quartering is correct, you can see that the crank pins are facing up on this side. I'll try not to move it, it's okay, there we are. And on this side, they're all facing forward. There they are. So the quartering's done. All we need to do is engage the drive here onto the axle. And I'll just spin that round just a little bit like that so it's a bit easier. There we are, it's at the top now. And just leave a small gap like so. We just need a tiny little screwdriver. There we are, that's the drive engaged on the axle. And now the motor turns the wheel, albeit slowly, which is great. I've also made up the bogey and the pony just with some spare wheels that I've got. It's really handy when you're building logos like this to have spare wheels. I've got a spare wheel set here. This is the old style Romford with the larger flange there, uh, but great for testing. It means that you don't knock your nicely painted wheels. And I do actually have, uh, these are the wheels here that we're actually going to use. So again, all nicely lined and hand painted, ready for the model itself. But for the interests of the video, let me see if I can find, I can't find screws. There are the screws. Screwdriver. Fit the collar on as well. Uh, how does that go? Can't remember. Through there, like that. Yeah. And there, we essentially have. Pacific chassis. Not bad, eh? Next up, fit the pickups and get the wiring done. 
So then fitting the pickups then, that's one of the things that people kind of struggle with a little bit, I think, with making kit-built locomotives. It is a little bit fiddly, and I'm just trying something new with this one, which I'll explain to you in a moment. But pickups, basically, it depends on whether you're running DC or DCC for your locomotives. If you're running DC, then you can get away with using a live chassis system, which means you only have to pick up from one side. And it depends what sort of wheels you use. Now, the wheels here that I've got show the difference between insulated and non-insulated. Here we've got the insulated wheel. It's got the, the rim there. You can just see that layer there, which is just a, an insulating layer, which protects the center of the wheel from the outside of the wheel. So the only bit that's live on that wheel is the metal rim. On the insulate, on the live wheel, sorry, um, you can see that there's no rim there whatsoever. So that means the electric current goes across there into the axle and would mean that anything that that axle touches, so the bearing and therefore the frame, everything is live. So that's for DC, you can get away with using one side pickups only. But for DCC, and that's what I'm setting my locomotives up for, um, you need insulating wheels on both sides. And I've fitted those to this particular model. It means that in the future, if I do wish to go down the DCC route, I can do so. But what it means is that we have to fit pickups to both sides. And it does make it a little bit tricky. However, what I've done is, well, to start off with, what we need is somewhere to mount the pickups. And before I painted the model, I just added these two bits of uh, angle brass, soldered into the frame underneath, and that's gonna support the pickup pads. And the pickup pads are these little chaps here. And it's basically copper clad uh, PCB, I think it is. It comes in sort of sheets like this. I picked this up from eBay, uh, five sheets for, I don't know, a few quid or whatever. And I just cut it to size and with the mini drill, I just gap the middle. And that means, and I do test it, I test it with a, a voltmeter just to make sure that the current can't swap between both sides. And for a Pacific class locomotive, we need two pickup pads, one for the front, one for the back. We need to join the pickup pads somehow. And we also need to provide a route for the current to go from the pickup pads pair to the motor as well. So the little idea that I've come up with is before what I used to do was I used to fix the pickup pad onto the frame of the chassis and then solder everything in with the pickup pad in place. But what I'm trying this time is a new idea and it's basically making the pickup pad and everything that goes with it off the locomotive and then once it's made, I can fit it to the locomotive and it's a lot easier to, I found it's a lot easier to work with it when it's off the loco. So this is the one for the front. So you can see we've got two long arms there at the front. Uh, that's for picking up from the wheels. We'll bend those in shape later. These two here are the ones that go, that link the two pickup pads. And then these are again, wheel pickups. So if I just slot that in like so, into the frame there, that's how it will sit on the locomotive. So these ones will go to the wheels like so. And then you can probably just see just in the middle there, the pads that link up to the rear one. And there we go, just zoomed in a little bit there so you can see exactly what's going on. So from the wheels, from the wheels, and then linking from front to rear. So what we've got to do now then is build or finish off making the pads for the rear part of the locomotive, if I can just get this out, there we are, and I'll show you how to do that now. So this particular pad bin, what we need is a pickup for the rear wheel, which is already fitted here, and we also need a wire that goes to the motor, and then the other pickup pad, which is here, will just join on like that. So kind of sit in there like so, solder those wires down like that and then that will be running the current from front to rear so let's go ahead and solder on one of our pickups first of all uh, and i use this 0.4 whoops sorry 0.45 brass rod uh, sorry nickel silver rod that's nice kind of got enough spring and i think the main quality of it is that it doesn't actually tarnish which is good so I've already got the iron up to temperature it's on 370 celsius 
as always in with flux and then I'm basically going to I want to make sure that you can see this right there we go like, all I need to do is just hold there we are hold the piece of nickel silver rod where I want it to go like so Oops. and I'm using electrical grade solder for this because it is after all electrical work so just pick up some flux on the iron you noticed I've already tinned the, the board and then just in with the iron and let it set and there we are nice and neat on there in place and then we just need to add the wire as well so this is where we'll need our screwdriver just to hold that wire now this is very flexible wire I got this with a, a Pico turntable kit actually and it's really nice soft copper wire inside I've stripped it in the end and we're going to just hold that in place like so just using try and show you this without getting my hands in the way hold that there yes you can see it excellent flux and then a dab more solder on the end like so and in with the iron like that there we are now I did just get the <laughs> screwdriver caught on there but actually that's a fine joint there we are all cleaned up and now just go in with the glass fiber brush just to clean up any of the residue that's on there there we are so that's nice and neat so we've now got two really nice pickup pads and I'm just going to fit now so we'll get the chassis back in let's move the block away get the chassis back in and I just want to see it's this way around it goes just want to see how much insulating we need on there so let's just have a look so that's going to bend into there like so so probably three quarters of an inch and I've got some insulation stuff here this is from I think this is 70 70 wire I'm not sure anyway I'll strip it down with the wire strippers and just make little pieces of insulating sleeve I suppose just cut a couple of those off approximately the same sort of length grab stuck grab this little chap move that one out of the way and then just thread this insulating sleeve onto the pickup like that and all the while all we're, it's, it's a belt and braces thing I mean what we don't want is for there to be some sort of accident and somehow the pickup touches the frame and that would short it out potentially. So there we are. The pickups are now insulated. The wires will be able to connect through to the motor. And now we can mount these pickups and solder them on properly and then adjust the pickups to pick the current up from the wheel. So I fitted the rear pickup pad like so, just with super glue, and we've now got to fit the front one. So just a, a little dab of glue on the pickup bar itself. Don't need much. I've got some on the got some on the brake hanger there. Just get rid of that. There we go. Right. And now we can try and get this pickup pad in without covering it all in glue. Make sure it's the right way around. There we are, in like so and down. And it kind of rests in place, just like that. I'm just gonna press that down with the screwdriver just to make sure it's fully secured. There we are, let that dry. And so what you should be able to see there, I hope, <coughs> is that we've got Pickups now ready to be bent into position. 
for all six wheels and the little connectors that we put in between front and back are basically already in the correct position. So all we need to do is just dab in with the soldering iron and they'll be connected. This is the only bit of soldering obviously that we're doing while the actual pickups attached to the locomotive so it means it's a much easier way of doing things I think. So we just pick up a small amount of solder and solder the pickup into position like so. Same again, flux. Small amount of solder onto the iron. In quickly. And that's now soldered in position. Now I'm just going to prove to you that it does actually all work and uh, everything is working correctly or as it should do just with the voltmeter here. So there's the tone and then we'll check the pickup from front to rear so one to two lovely steady tone and on the other side as well one to two and then if we try on the other side alternate ones there is no tone so that means that we've got two completely isolated sides of the locomotive everything is run front to back everything there is ready to be set up and we'll just bend the pickups into shape and uh, get the wires attached to the motor and this thing will run under its own power for the first time. So time for the pickups now then. Uh, there's no two ways about this really. The pickups are a bit of a fiddly job. They're a bit annoying. I've soldered up the motor. I've checked the polarity to make sure that it runs in the correct direction. The way that I do that is just to get a ready to run locomotive, put that on my test track and then make this do the same thing in terms of which way it goes with the controller set a particular way. I've also added on here a little torque arm. Where's my little pointer? Just a little torque arm just to stop the motor flopping around too much. And what I'll do is actually just solder that gently in there and then it's held in into the frame there. Like I say, that's just a piece of half mil brass rod. So underneath then you can see I've already fitted the pickups for most of this locomotive they're already done we just need to do a couple more the first stage really is to bend the pickups away from any frame detail that you have so bend them up and away and then what we want to do is just with a pair of small pliers just bend the pickup towards the wheel so that it's almost touching like that same at the back There we are, and then we want to put in a second bend. So just move the sleeve down, and then we want to put in a second bend about here, like that. So that the pickup touches on the wheel, like so. And you kind of want, that's actually a bit too much, you just want a nice light pressure on both sides of the wheel so that when you move the wheel left and right like that, you've still got pressure on the edge of the pickup. And you want to be able to spin the wheel. There needs to be some friction there. You can probably hear it actually. Just as I spin the wheel there. Let's do the rear one as well so you can see once more what we're actually doing. So let me try and zoom in a bit. So here we are working on this rear pickup then. We've already bent it in towards the wheel. We now need to make a further bend so that the pickup can actually touch the wheel. And that's not too bad actually. I can hear that that's 
touching the wheel at the back there. I'm just going to push the pickup down ever so slightly. And then what we want to do is trim off any excess like that. You don't want to go too close. I'll just do the front one as well. And I'll just leave a little bit of excess on there just in case we need to do any testing and adjustments on there. I'll get the test track set up now and we'll check each pair of pickups individually to make sure that we're picking up the correct current. Okay folks, well we're just set up here on the uh, little test track and what we're going to do is check each pair of pickups in turn to make sure that they're picking up from the track as they should. So let's start off with the rear wheels. Picks up no problem. Front wheels, same deal. And then rear wheels, also no problem. What I'll do now is just put the connecting rods on and we'll see this locomotive run as a fully coupled up 060 for the first time. Well folks, I said I was going to run this as an 060 but I couldn't resist putting the body on and putting the bogey and the pony on as well and running this as it should be as a 462 Pacific class locomotive and here you can see now on the test track a beautifully smooth locomotive running beautifully now. Obviously that's had no running in, no tweaks, no nothing, just basically out of the box. Out of the box is a bunch of parts and now hopefully as you can see soldered together and now working as it should do as a locomotive and this is only going to get better as we work on it. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. Next time I'll uh, work on the body and get the tender sorted out as well. In the meantime, whatever you're doing this week, enjoy your modelling. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.